Oh, let's kill rock stars. Hi, I'm Weena, and this is The Media Show. We've been answering questions that people ask Google about the media. One of the questions a lot of people have asked is, why does the radio play the same songs over and over? So we're here today at the offices of the really cool, really important, really old punk label Kill Rockstars with Kill Rockstars president, Portia Sabin. Hi, Portia, say hi to the audience. Hi. Portia, why does the radio play the same songs over and over again? Radio makes their money by selling advertising. Okay. And so in order to get advertisers, to make advertisers happy, they want to have the most people listening at any given time possible. So if they have the biggest listening audience, advertisers are going to get their ads heard by the most people. So what they do is they try to play popular songs as often as possible to get those listeners listening when there's going to be an ad. Now a radio station, like any other business, must show a profit. To do this and still be able to provide a certain amount of free airtime in the interests of the public, it must sell a major portion of its time to those who wish to advertise. The value of radio time to a sponsor is judged by the amount of goods it sells to the public. So it's kind of like TV. It's a lot like TV, yes. They assume that people are going to be listening in their cars mm -hmm. and they're just going to be turning it on and pushing the button until they hear the song that they want to hear. Oh, so they're not really looking for a station. They're just looking for a particular song. For a particular song, exactly. That's what the radio people are assuming, huh. is that they're just listening for that song. And so if they, don't, if they push the button, the scan button, and they land on a station and it's not playing the song they want to hear, they're going to push that button again until they find that song. So it behooves radio stations to play the same songs, the really popular songs, as much as possible. But how do they know when a song is popular? They do a lot of market research to try to figure that out. And that part is like a weird black magic soup. Nobody really understands how they determine which songs they choose. But they, once they've chosen a song and they've decided that that song's a popular song, they play it so often because they want to get as many ears on the radio at any given time as possible. And at this point, um, we have a situation where media has consolidated so much in this country. <laughs> Clear Channel is the perfect example for radio because Clear Channel has been going around buying up radio stations in America over the last 20 years to the point where there's almost no independent radio stations left. Whoa. They own, in some markets, they own every station. Whoa. How is that, how is that legal? There used to be FCC regulations against it, then there was a ton of deregulation, and now Clear Channel's been able to do that. I'm still not clear on how it is that they're not fined for that, that that's been allowed. But my understanding is actually under the Clinton administration, there was a lot of deregulation. So they basically engineer a song that people are going to like, and then they put it on the radio, and, and then they play it until people like it? So they'll listen some more? It, it, it's sort of like a, like a cycle. It's a relationship game that, that we're not invited to play. What we're talking here about is terrestrial commercial radio, so AM, FM radio. Okay, like over the airwaves. Over the airwaves. Um, independent labels like Kill Rock Stars have traditionally never had access to this to this type of radio. We just wow. simply don't have access to terrestrial radio. So you're telling me you guys have had Bikini Kill, Elliot yeah. Smith, Slater Kitty, The Decemberists, never gotten a single song played on terrestrial radio. What? Not no. This is a travesty. Songs get played on the radio because of the relationships that the major labels have with the radio stations. So you need to have a person, let's call him Bob, and Bob has worked at Sony for 25 years. 
Bob has a very tight relationship with the program directors at many of the Clear Channel stations around the country. Bob is the person who can call that program director and say, hey, I've got a new song by Drake or Lady Gaga or whatever. I don't even know if those people are on Sony, but that program director will say, okay, I'll listen to it. A person like me has no access to that program director. I can't get that person on the phone. I can't get them to listen to return my emails. And what has happened over the years is groups have sprung up, like marketing companies have sprung up saying, we're, you know, we're radio specialists, we'll get your music in front of those program directors. It doesn't work. It actually doesn't work. Maybe the people at the labels would say, and certainly my sister says, oh, those bands are just dumb, they're not popular because nobody likes them, and that's why they're not on the radio and why nobody listens to them. So oh yeah, that's not at all the case. <laughs> Like Pandora is almost all independent hmm. plays. Like it's just, it's fantastic. Really? Yeah, because people want to hear the music that we have. I mean, think about the music, you know, the bands that are you know, people love, like Death Cab for Cutie, or like I said, the Decemberists, we have three of their records. And if it were a level playing field, I think we dominate in terrestrial radio too, but it's not like we've been talking about. It's not at all a level playing field. We don't have any of the resources that they have. So why, how has the market research not figured out that people actually like to listen to Elliot Smith? Because you also have to put another factor in there, which is the payola factor. Oh. Payola is not allowed. What is payola? Payola is where you give money or gifts to radio stations in exchange for radio play of a okay. song. I was told by someone who shall remain nameless that it costs $4 million to get a song played That's... on commercial radio. Wait, wait, wait. Not an album. One song. For one song. $4 million for one song. Now that was several years ago, so maybe that number has changed. My allowance will never be that large. No, <laughs> it will never ever be that large. Yeah, so that's what we're dealing with. And of course, an independent label like me, we don't have $4 million to put into a radio campaign. It just doesn't exist. So that's another reason that we're shut out. So we don't have the relationships and we don't have the cash. Isn't the internet supposed to change all this? I mean, I don't mean to be naive, but like the internet was supposed to change everything. Is it, is it doing anything at all to break up all this stuff?